Hey there guys, welcome back to my stock market technical analysis channel. I'm going to get into a couple things that I'm seeing, uh, talk about kind of what happened today. Today was Fed Day. The Fed came out and, you know, talked about some stuff. Ultimately, what they said, at least my read on it and the market's read on it, was that they are going to continue to murder the dollar. If you go back to some of my earlier videos, I continued to talk about this inflation deflation thesis where I thought that we had the potential to to uh, th that my, my whole thesis has been around the Fed that they're kind of boxed into a corner and they either will choose to allow deflation allow the markets to correct and go back to kind of the mean or they will choose to fight that and inflate the money supply and fight that that deflation that's naturally occurring, uh, and that's what they you know looks like that's what they've chosen to do. Um, I mean, clearly they've they've uh, increased their balance sheet uh, about eighty percent or so in the last few months, and <clears throat> metals today took off. So that's what I want to point out. Let's get into it. Uh, let's look at this S and P five hundred heat map. So this is what the this is how the S&P 500 performed today. And as you can see, pretty much Fang was the only thing really lifting the market. You know, anything kind of tech and cloud based it looks like, Microsoft, Apple, uh Apple's not really cloud based, but I guess they have a little bit. Uh Amazon, Google was up slightly, Facebook was down, so that's interesting. But ultimately, you see that most of the gains uh in the S&P 500 were narrowed to the tech sector uh, and banks, banking sector took a real hit. Uh, this is because the Federal Reserve basically said they're not going to raise interest rates for years to come. And in reality, I don't think the Federal Reserve is ever going to be able to get interest rates back up above 3% without some sort of major monetary reset uh, or change. Um, so I suspect that the banking sector will continue to be weak. Uh, you know, the banking sector ha never really recovered, uh, and it's going to continue to be weak because interest banks need interest rates in order to make a, a healthy profit. So they'll have to find other ways to make money. Uh, maybe their trading desks, um, and that's uh, so. Yeah, financials took a hit. I mean, pretty much everything took a hit except for tech. Now this and yesterday we saw this where only about 100 stocks, 125 stocks in the S&P 500 were rising and you know 380 stocks or so were falling. So it's the the rally has narrowed uh, over the last few days doesn't mean that that is that's going to continue but the last couple days then the rally has really narrowed to pretty much just FANG and tech, and um, the rest of the stocks have been solding off. Yeah, we saw this short, brief little dash for trash where Chesapeake and some of these garbage, some of these stocks are really affected, had huge days, but they're just bouncing off of, you know, really, really big lows. They're not going to sustain that most likely. And, you know, Chesapeake is down huge again today. I mean, these are bankrupt companies. So what we're looking for is what's the sustained, sustainable move next. Let's get into the charts and figure out what happened. So NASDAQ futures, this, uh, you know, nothing's broke here ultimately. So no reason to really go too far into it. We don't have a sell signal. Uh, if I see something, I'll point it out but we don't have it yet. Here's here's the S&P 500 futures. So this is kind of setting up for a breakdown or a sell signal. We'll have to wait to see if we get it, but we have this bearish rising wedge here and we overshot it and we've now come back, come back down into the wedge. So this is what we're looking for now is a breakdown. Do we get it? Oh, maybe we get it overnight. You know, it could come overnight. We get a big breakdown. We don't have it yet. So there was nothing to really trade off of at the you know after the fed meeting um you know i didn't want to take a short position uh without that sell signal and we don't also we, we don't have it in in tech yet either so ideally if ideally for a nice solid sell signal we'll see a breakdown in tech too let's look at the cues here 
Q's again, just moving higher, still, you know, a little bit of a pullback, but in the last little bit, but nothing out of the ordinary. So still bullish on that one. Um, I am not long anything uh, in in tech, just to call that out. So, uh, but the chart is still bullish. Here's the S and P 500. So here's the wedge. This is a nice clean wedge, uh, easy to spot, and we're looking again for the sell signal. So saw some sideways action today. Maybe it breaks down. Maybe it doesn't. Until then, we'll wait. Uh, but the di the divergences in the PPO and RSI tell me that we're going to have a sell signal soon, uh, or or we're going to have a sell signal at some point. It doesn't have to happen soon, but this bearish rising wedge, we're kind of at the end of the road for the bearish rising wedge. So it's either gonna break out to the upside or we're gonna get that sell signal. So we're waiting, that should come, something should happen soon on that one. XLV started to break this little uptrend line right here. You can see it, but only in the very into the close, it wasn't impulsive, tech hasn't broken down. We just don't have enough evidence that this was a breakdown, so nothing to look at there really. I'll point that out. I mean, if you want to mark it out, the you know, you can mark out this horizontal trend line. We're looking for a nice impulsive breakdown and probably a breakdown below this 101.30. A breakdown below there should set it in motion to get down to this 96.80, and then ultimately, if you get a breakdown there, that should set in the next major trend. Uh, but until then, we don't see it. XLK, bullish, this is tech. Here's XLF. Okay, so XLF did have a breakdown. Um, you can see that we have this rising price channel that we've been in um, for, for a while, and <clears throat> we broke that right here. So here's, your, here's a breakdown candle, uh, and it followed by a confirming candle. So um, we'll have to wait and see uh, if the other sectors are going to follow suit, but the financials have started to break down, so there might be some follow through here, or we might have a kickback. It might just be a false breakdown. Again, when you have breakdowns on Fed days, it's it's you have a high probability of it being a false signal. So I don't like to take I don't like to take a just a you know all I see is a breakdown here in XLF. I don't see it in anything else ultimately. So I don't, um, and it happened right after the Fed. So I gotta wait a day or two after the Fed to see what the market wants to do. Uh, and, and then we'll, we'll start to look. So the next day or two, we should start to see some sort of confirming action, whether that's breakdowns across the board or uh, a resumption of the uptrend. Walmart, we do have a short on Walmart, continues to act weak, uh, you know, but it's just sideways, really. I mean, it doesn't want to move down and it doesn't want to move up. So we're just waiting for this to break, waiting for you know the you know the bulls to give up hope or or just get tired of the sideways grind. I don't know, but I think it breaks to the downside. But again, still sideways. Um, I'm short from up here, so it is a profitable trade by about five and a half percent. So yeah, I mean it's nothing new really there. Apple. Okay, so something to watch on Apple uh, might prove to be kind of a, a pivot point or an inflection point. Um, we have this rise. This is off the lows that it made back in March or February. And basically, you had this rising channel here or this trend line that we broke back here and we've been back testing. So we broke it, kind of went sideways. Now, recently, we've just been impulsively moving higher. We could run up and do a full back test of this trend line. It's up there a ways, up around 368. So it's got another um, three or four percent to go higher, and that might be all that that there is in Apple. Again, you'll have to watch to see if there, you know, if it even gets that high, and if it does, does it? Is there a reaction? Microsoft, same story. Um, let me clean these up. Microsoft, we've got rising channel right here. Uh, and a bigger channel going all the way back to 2009. So here's your channels that's created this kind of rising lift off channel here. Uh, we never broke that in Microsoft back in uh, <clears throat> back in the, the, the crash that we just recently had. So that kind of came down to it, held, bounced up. 
we're, we're kind of started to go parabolic now. So this could run a little more higher uh, and we'll just have to wait to see what's going on. I don't have anything, you know, really to point out in here. Um, at this point, I just don't think it makes sense to go long if you're not long. Uh, it doesn't make sense to go short either. So um, I think from my side of things, what I'm planning on doing, I'm just sitting on the sidelines uh, for major indice uh, trades, and I'm just trying to look for individual stock trades. Volatility is starting to pick up a little bit, which is interesting. Um, you can see here's the here's TVIX. And you can see you draw the support line out on an hourly chart and we've been chopping up and down through it a little bit. So recently we, we came down below that dropped, but now we've bounced right back up to it and pretty much closed right at it right there at the close. So if we get some sort of a sell off in the after hours today, uh, tonight, then volatility could spike. So we'll watch for that. There might be a trade coming up. If it can recover this trend line, I've said in past videos, that's when I would be interested in this again. And that's because we broke down. And if we recover, that's a false breakdown, kind of like what we saw right here. This was a false breakdown. And when it recovered, it rallied uh, and had a 53% rally. So I'm watching for that. If it wants to recover, maybe we get another rally or maybe we get another big spike in volatility, maybe up, you know, We'll have to point out some levels as it goes up. I don't expect volatility to get ever, you know, to get back up to here to this nine hundred thousand dollar range, but it could have, you know, a, a decent lift off uh, up to you know four hundred or something like that. So we'll have to watch, um, watch for that. All right, Nvidia. I closed this trade, stopped out. Uh, you know, they gapped over my stop. Here was my stop right here is three sixty three. I was looking for a daily close above that. That was my stop. Uh, and I did stop out. So took a loss on that one. Um, <clears throat> and we'll just look at the loss here. It is a loss of, I closed it about, you know, close to the day, about a 7% loss. Um, you know, that's the name of the game. Again, it's all about position sizing. I don't completely load the boat on one trade. Uh, I take uh, units, I guess, is a way to look at it. So each trade that I take is kind of an equal unit. And that way, <clears throat> Um, if I'm right on the trade, then, you know, I, I one trade doesn't wipe me out, basically. So if I, you know, if you take a too large of a size on any one trade, then it can really hurt. But if you use units and kind of the same amount, all, then it, it, it's not as bad. Um, I do um, I do take larger position size, sizes here and there on high conviction trades. But, um, you know, for the most part, I, I trade units. So... Lost that one, had to let that one go. Let's look at this zoom. I had to let this one go as well. This one wasn't as bad because I didn't like this trend line. I pointed it out in the, the video, this bearish rising wedge. So the top of the wedge, I couldn't quite, after examining it a little bit further, I couldn't quite draw it out. It, I couldn't tell whether the wedge was maybe here or whether it was kind of up here. And because I couldn't decisively make that, um, draw that out. I didn't have enough data points. Uh, I, I tapered down my position the other day um, because I was a little unsure. So, uh, and then today I took the rest of that off. Um, so I had to close that out. Now this could easily gap back down tomorrow, but for as of right now, I just didn't have enough data. So I needed to see some more data. And once I have another reaction point, I can start to firm up this trend line. Then I can start to trade around this bearish rising wedge. But for now, um, after I had kind of questioned that wedge, I decided to kind of start to taper down that trade. So pointed that out. Um, this one, DraftKings. I am, I was interested in, in, you know, I am interested in shorting this one. However, it needs to break this nice clean uptrend. So here's your uptrend line. Just looking for a breakdown. Started to get it, got it at the end of the day. But again, last hour of the day on a Fed day, I'm not going to take that breakdown. I need to see more market consensus, a, a nice solid breakdown, uh, you know, with uh, within the regular trading session. Fed's now on, you know, Fed's we're past the Fed event, so now if we get a breakdown, it's it's a lot more believable. So I'll watch for that. Let everybody know if I see something happening there. And small caps broke down. So here's small caps. You have this nice uptrend line, IWM right here. Small caps, you know, the NASDAQ was up slightly today and, and the 
the uh, Russell 2000 down pretty substantially. So this is again is that thinning of the breadth of the rally and just narr it's all narrowing down to these fang stocks. And so that can be deceiving because the fang, you know, you've got just a couple companies and they're able to lift up the triple Qs, of course, because they have a 40% weighting in that. And then the S&P 500, they're about a 20% weighting. So they can kind of buoy it, it, you know, even if you have a lot of the other ones selling off because they're, you know, have such a heavy weighting, five stocks, 20%, they can kind of buoy it. And so it can be deceiving that you don't necessarily see the churn that's happening, the rotation. Um, and so we're watching for that, but the small caps did break down. Um, it was a Fed day breakdown, so we'll have to see if that sticks or if they wanna pop this right back up or maybe they gap this up back into support. Again, I didn't wanna take anything here because of the we're not seeing the breakdown in the S&P 500, uh, but if you get a sell signal in the S&P 500, uh, then and this confirms with further down downward action, then that could be a possible short. That might be the end of this uh, small cap rally. But for me today, the star of the show was really gold and the gold mining trade. So I took a couple trades based on this, uh, based on the the price action in gold, um, and we'll look at that. So gold, nice impulsive move higher. Um, gold it looks extremely bullish right now, and here's the reason why it looks even more bullish because we had this false breakdown right here. So if I roll out on the hourly, you can see uh, support. You know, it was resistance back here, resistance uh, popped it a little bit, came down, held reaction as support, support, support here. You know, pretty much held the support right here, and then we broke down. Nice impulsive breakdown, you know, you can see nice impulsive red candles, but it just stopped. It actually fell all the way down to here, to 1668 intra, intra hour, and then stopped short and recovered and has since popped right back up into support. Today, nice impulsive move higher uh, out of this flag that this flag that we saw. So gold looks extremely bullish because it recovered the support after having a false breakdown and that's, that's bullish for gold. So the miners reacted positively. Let's look at these miners. Here's Barrett Gold. Um, and I had mentioned a couple videos ago that I was starting to get interested in the miners again, starting to build positions. Um, and, you know, I've been saying for a while that this would be the entry, this would be the start of my buying area for Barrick. So I did buy some there. Um, and I was hoping to get, you know, a little bit lower prices to build a nice huge position, but I, um, you know, we didn't get lower prices. So I was able to buy some there. I added to those today, uh, you know, nice breakout here. So we'll, we'll wait and see if we get follow through. Cause again, it's fed day, can't fully be trusted, but there's a lot of signs that say that gold should go higher. Miners should go higher. The dollar's showing weakness. So uh, you know, we continue to, um, you know, show strength. Barrick, you know, if this momentum holds, which it looks like it will, but we'll need to wait and see, then I suspect we're going to get back up to here, this 28, uh, 28 zone right up in here. So that's kind of what we're looking for in the short term. And, and then maybe we pop it and start kind of the next leg higher. Gold is in a bull market. If you look here, Barrett Gold, gold in general, is making a series of higher, higher lows and higher highs. So this could set us up for the next kind of longer leg higher in Barrick. Looking at the daily chart here, you can clearly see higher lows and higher highs. High, you have a high, you have a high, higher low higher low right here. So if we stop short, we should pop and make a new higher high. Where, do, where does that put us to? Well, you know, we've di clearly have resistance right here at 28. You know, it's about 2820. Uh, you can see the cluster back there. That was the previous area that I sold my position at. Uh, and looks like we're good to, you know, as of right now, it looks like it's good to reload back up. That's kind of what I'm going to probably be doing if there's continued bullish price action. Uh, and I started doing more, you know, I was buying Barrick today. And next point of resistance, you know, looking through it, we could pop up to here, might see a reaction right up around this level, around 
<clears throat> around 30, 33, 50. Uh, so we'll watch that and we'll just kind of point that out as it as it goes. Uh, AEM. So I was buying this one pretty heavily uh, the last two days. I did not buy any more today, but I uh, had bought a decent position the last couple days. The reason why I liked it was this gap right here. So we popped the gap, you know, we ran up, we came down and retested the gap, had the breakdown right here and recovered the gap. And right in this area, you can see we broke down and recovered the gap. That was support. You can see it was support here. Nice impulsive candle breakout uh, on that. Came back down, tagged it, and impulsively ran higher. And so we came down, and then we, when we undercut it and broke support, that shook out any bulls that maybe saw that as a breakdown. Uh, and then they recovered it, and now we're impulsively moving higher. So we this thing looks good to run. So I'm <clears throat> going to continue to watch it, see if it's going to see if the momentum continues moving higher uh, and this might continue to make new highs. Uh, I also took this, this was a play I made today on NUGT NUG. Took this one, the reason why I, so here's what I was looking. On Fed days, I always watch a couple things. I watch gold, I watch the dollar, and, and then I watch, you know, just the indices, the S&P 500 and the triple Qs. I'm always watching those looking for a potential breakdown or, or, you know, something that might happen. But on Fed days, because the Fed is all kind of the bigger macro things, I look at gold and, and the dollar um, extra close. And so what I saw today was the Fed came out. I saw this sell-off right here in NUG, uh, just this little brief sell-off, and I was watching it. And then it started to hold and it was holding right in here and started to make a move higher. And when it made this candle right here, this pop candle right there, I, I pretty, I went, I went in pretty heavy for a day trade. Basically. Uh, that's how I prefer to trade nug and J nug is, you know, day trade it or hold it for one day. I don't hold it for very long, but I saw that pop went in pretty heavy and rode this huge ripper higher sold about half my position right here when we started to get this consolidation area and then rode this last little leg higher and was selling into this leg right here uh closed out my entire position uh you know up in here and and then you know that was it for the for the trade so um just a nice way to add profits to make up for some of the losses in um fully made up for my losses in uh zoom and nvidia in this one trade so it's just something to watch that's why in the video earlier this morning i talked about gold i said it's an important thing to watch if gold and gold looks strong to me and that's why i was saying someone commented they thought gold was maybe going to go lower if the fed indicates you know more stimulus or you know continued stimulus and i just i just pointed out that the gold has been strong and has been rallying throughout all of this stimulus which is what it really should do. Um, it's not so much a risk on, risk off trade. It's more of an inflation. It's a more of an inflation trade right now. I think the market is, try, is starting to sniff out future inflation, uh, price inflation where grocery store, I mean, go to the grocery store right now and try to buy some meat. You'll see, and not just meat, other, other products too. You know, the prices are rising pretty drastically, you know, 20%, things like that. And so I think the market's starting to sniff some of that out. And, and that's why you're seeing gold react around on Fed days because the Fed is creating a lot of inflation and uh, that's uh, continuing to put uh, pressure, downward pressure on the dollar and upward pressure on, on gold and, and, and also upward pressure on, on the markets as well. Okay, and here's the dollar, the DXY, and you can see we've had a pretty impulsive sell-off recently over the last few days or really in the last couple of weeks, the dollar's been really weak. And this could be the start of the next major trend in the dollar, which would be down. We have to break we have to break support and we haven't done that yet. So I'm not saying that the trend has started, but we are making a pretty impulsive, uh, you know, beeline straight for that support line down here. If I show the support, you can see that's, this is going back to, you know, for a while. And you can see this channel that we've been in and we're coming right down to it. So if it breaks that, then we can start to look at that next major trend down in the dollar. Um, 
And the reason why this might be the next major trend is because we saw this initial dash for cash. So this was the huge move up and everyone liquidating stocks in the big sell off and just rushing to the dollar. And now we're seeing that kind of go away and we're starting to see everyone basically selling their dollars and which would make sense. You know, you, there's no, you wouldn't want to own dollars if the, if the fed is going to inflate away your purchasing power. So that's what maybe we're going to see that start to play out. Um, and, and we'll need to watch the bond market to see that. Now the fed is in there buying bonds. So they've kind of taken away that signal which doesn't help, you know, the bond market isn't giving as reliable of signals as it has in the past because the Fed's in there manipulating it, buying bonds. But we can watch the dollar to see if the dollar shows weakness. Uh, we can watch gold, you know, the, we can watch other things that maybe will tell us whether the, uh, whether the dollar is going to continue to weaken. So just want to point that out. Need to see the major break of support down here before we make, you know, some sort of call on on a major trend break in the dollar but if and when that happens maybe it could be a big move down we'll have to wait and see so okay guys hope you found some value in the video give me a thumbs up let me know if there's any stocks or anything you want me to look at uh, and we'll see how the rest of the week plays out now that the fed's out of the way talk to you later